Hello, fifth grade Bronx middle school math. We are starting a new unit. So we are done with triangles. We are done with conversions. Just kidding. We are still going to apply the same principles that we learned in conversion. And we have a special example problem in this video using conversions. So unit 1B, what is that going to be like? Well, the goal is that we are going to learn the standard algorithm for multiplication. Now, it, the standard algorithm is the old-fashioned way to do multiplication. Y'all are used to the array, the box model. But the standard algorithm, I will link. I have put the links in the Google Classroom, but I'll also put them in the like description of this video below. These two videos are wonderful for explaining the standard algorithm. And the reason why I like these videos so much compared to me filming it myself is because they use a special like animation tools to make it neat and clean that I cannot do. So like if you go through here, you can see that there's graphics that really make it great to understand the standard algorithm. So again, I'm going to be putting the links to these videos in the description below. Please go watch these two videos to understand the standard algorithm. And then this video is going to help us with our practice problems and what we are learning directly in our classes. So let's begin. The goal of Unit 1B is to understand that the standard algorithm is just a different way of showing familiar strategies, like adding partial products that result from multiplying each place value separately. So remember, there are several paths to the top of the mountain, and the standard algorithm is just one way, but we learn it because it helps us understand the overall piece of math, how the units and parts work, how components work within each other. It's a fun puzzle that we get to play. So y'all know the daily expectations for class, but with the standard algorithm and with fifth grade math, we get word problems. Word problems are mind games, y'all. Do not let them trip you up. So doing this vocab check is going to help us attack these word problems and not be overwhelmed. So when you see a factor and factor in a word problem, don't get scared. That's just talking about a component, a, a number that's going to be important in the word problem. When you hear product, that's, they're basically asking for the answer. So when they ask for the final product, they're asking for the answer. In the array model, that's the box method that y'all are used to seeing. Now, equal groups. What does that mean? Well, the example I've been using in class is if I was having a concert. So I'm having a concert and you know i'm not that big yet it's just my family and friends and so i only have one section and each section has five people in it that is a terrible five y'all that's why nobody's coming to my concert so each section has five people in it okay that's doable well i get big my sound clouds blowing up and I'm getting cocky. Well, now my concert has two sections of five people. And we can say we're doing sections at this small concert because of quarantine. <laughs> Make it relatable. So if you asked me how many people are at my concert, well, I would say 10. But there are two groups of five. So that's what we mean by equal groups. So that's what multiplication is. 
we're just taking equal groups and multiplying them so that we can figure it out. Okay, well, my SoundCloud is getting bigger and people are sharing me on Facebook, Instagram. Now I'm going off on TikTok. Okay. So now I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five sections at my concert. I am getting cocky, y'all. So five sections with five people in each group. What is the product? Well, let's look for the factors. The factors here are, I have five sections with five people in each section. So that's going to tell me the final product is 25 people are totally at my concert. That's the final number of people at my concert. I honestly don't even know if I had a concert, like what type of music would I play? I maybe like the washboard or like, yeah, I think I do the washboard, you know, get some bluegrass in there anyway. So one thing to watch out with word problems is do not get scared by these words, factors and products. Factor is just at, like the components. So remember five groups with five people each. Those were our factors. And product, that was the answer. Don't let them scare you, y'all. They are trying to play mind games. And remember, word problems, sometimes they're really tricky. They put in information that doesn't matter just to make sure you're paying attention. So read word problems carefully and look for those tricks. Okay, so let's think about how we multiply. I want us to use the standard algorithm, which can be found in these two videos over here. Go watch these if you are still a bit lost or you've never heard of the standard algorithm. I'm putting the link in the description below. But we are going to talk about the difference. So I want us to do the standard algorithm on the left, and then we'll do the array, the box method on the right. I am not going to waste your time by doing 100 times 7. Y'all know that. We just move, we multiply 1 by 7, and then give this 7 two extra place values, making it 700. I'm not going to waste your time. But let's move on to 109 times 7. So 109. I'm typing it because it looks pretty like that. So Okay. So let's begin with the standard algorithm. Now, I'm going to start with the ones place. So I'm going to multiply 7 times 9. So now that I've multiplied 7 times 9, I want to move on. But I know that this 6 is going to be in the way. So I'm going to put it in storage. And I've been calling my class, I've been telling my class that this is called, instead of the attic, we're calling the addit because later we're going to store it up here and then we're going to add it in a bit. So it's kind of like an attic, you know, we store it and then we use it. So now I'm going to move on to seven times zero, which we know is zero, but I still have this six here. So I'm going to add it. Now we're on our final one, seven times one. 
You guessed it, seven. So our final answer that we got here was 763. But this is a new method and I'm a bit insecure. So I'm gonna do the array model just to check my work. Then we're gonna add up 700 with zero and then 63 and we get 763. All right, so we got the same answer on both. Good job, y'all. Let's now do 129 times seven. I'm going to begin with the standard algorithm and you know the drill, we start in the ones place. So seven times nine equals 63. And again, our system is gonna be the same. This six is gonna be in the way, so we're gonna put it in the add it. Now, seven times two, that's 14. But I still have that six up here that I need to take down from storage. So that's gonna be 20. But now this two is in the way because that's where I need to be putting that answer. So I'm gonna put it in the add it. And don't worry, we're already done with the six, so we won't use it again. Seven times one. Seven times one equals seven plus two. That is, I'm getting 903. So let's go over to the array and check our work. 700, 140, And I got the same answer, 903, 903. That was just some practice to think about multiplying. But now I want you to think about what does 109 times seven have in common with 129 times seven? What do they have in common? Pause this video and think. How can I multiply this in a friendly way? How can I multiply this in an easy, convenient way using friendly numbers? So remember how I said I wasn't going to waste your time with 100 times seven? I said that was easy and you could do it in your head and you can. But I want you to pause this video and look at these three different multiplication problems. They all lead into each other. It is so neat. So look, you can do this one in your head, but I'm not going to lie. I can't do 109 times 7 in my head, or I thought I couldn't. But try and look at how these lead into each other when we use friendly numbers. See if you can notice and articulate how these problems work within each other using friendly numbers that make it easy and convenient for us to check our work. I want to stress that these methods are not to avoid you showing work on your homework and test. You need to show all of your work on your homework and test. I've stressed that endlessly in class. But this method using friendly numbers to make it convenient and easy allows us to check our work and be comfortable with math while also understanding the components of how multiplication work within each other. So we know you could do one or 100 times seven equals 700 in your head. That's doable. But can you do 109 times seven in your head? That's a bit more difficult. But if we know how to break it down and use friendly numbers, we can do it in our head. So look, 
here's that same component, the same problem that I said was too easy that you can do in your head. And you can do seven times nine in your head also. That's 63. So you, I don't, I, let me stress this again. This is not a way for you to get out of showing your work on your homework, quizzes, exit tickets, or assessments. This is just to make math less intimidating, less scary. And we want to see the relationships between these different problems, how they all flow into each other. So let's go on to 129 and see if you can do that in your head. So can you multiply 129 times 7 in your head? Is there a way to make this a friendly multiplication problem? Well, yeah, there is. So we just solved 109, or 109 times 7. That's right here. And we can multiply 7 times 20. That's not intimidating. That's not hard. So look at how these problems flow within each other. So when we take this answer from our previous problem, 7 times 109, 7, 6, 3, and we add it to 140, we get the same answer. So we're using prior knowledge from previous answers to check our work. It's really neat how math flows into each other like this. This is a great picture that shows the difference between the standard algorithm using partial products and the array model, the box method. So let me commentate this really quickly. And this video is just going over the lesson and lecture. Our next video is going to be going over practice problems. So if you learn from experience, go to our next video. So we start in the ones place. So we're going to do six times four. And that's going to be 24. Then when we do six times two, that's going to be 12. But notice how this math problem has it organized differently than what I have been doing and differently than what you'll be seeing in these videos. It's okay to be different. It really is. But the important part is that we understand what they're doing. So let's go through that. So I know 6 times 2 equals 12, but why is this 0 there? That 0 is there. Because notice how this 2 is in the tens place. That's why we are beginning in the tens place here. So that 0 is a placeholder for us. So that we are in the right decimal point. So 6 times 2 equals 12. Now 6 times 3, that's going to be 18. And look, they have 18 right here. But why do they have two zeros now? Because 12 only had an one zero. Well, look, the three is in the hundreds place of 324. So we need to put 18 in the hundreds place. That's why there are two zeros right there because it's in the same decimal point. Then we're going to add up all these different components, all the partial products. So from the ones place, the tens place, and the hundreds place. When we add it all up, we get 1,944. But you're not feeling too confident because you just learned the standard algorithm using partial products. So check your work with the array model, or this calls it the area model, but it could be called, you know, we all have different nicknames. 
So check it. We get 1,800, 120, 24, add them all together, and you get the same answer. Remember, there are many paths to the top of the mountain. Let's use those paths to check our work. Show your work, check your work. That's what it's about here. All right, y'all. So go to the next video for practice problems. We are going to be going through examples together so that we can learn how to apply these methods and what you'll be seeing in future exit tickets, future homeworks, or future assessments. Who knows? Y'all have a great day and I'll see you soon.